have you. All are welcome to join us at New Heart Worship Center in Aurora, Illinois at 888 Edgeline Drive, Suite 1750. You're welcome to join us on Tuesday night at 7.30. On Sundays at 9 a.m. for corporate prayer as well as 10 o'clock service. You're welcome to join us. We'd love to have you. So tonight, I'm going to speak about repent and repentance. So let me start with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that your word that you have given me go to the ones that need to hear the word. Give them new ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to receive. Remove the heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. In the name of Jesus, this is not an attack, but this is a necessary now word for you are telling us to repent in the name of Jesus. And we thank you and we praise you for that. So repent, according to the dictionary, Webster means to feel regretful or contrite for the past conduct, deep sorrow for a past sin. It also means a change of mind and to change your action. So you, if you know you're doing wrong, don't continue to do wrong. Repent of it. Get it right with God. Turn from what you are doing. Turn means to stop doing it. Go the opposite direction of what you were doing and get it right with God. Each day is a new day. It's a new day. That's new grace. That's new mercy. That the God that the Lord is giving us each day is a new day. Don't harbor in your sins. Don't think, oh, I didn't get away with nothing. For grace is gonna run out one day. And one day you're gonna have to give account for the sin that you didn't repent of. So get it right with God and repent of your sin. So no one is above repentance. For the Bible says we were born into sin. So we all were sinners. We have all committed sins. Now, I have a question for you. Have the Lord ever repented? The Creator, have He ever repented? He has. He really has. And I will take you to the book of Exodus. Exodus 32. The 11, uh, Exodus 32, 11 through 14. So let me get there. Exodus 32. And I have a lot of scriptures tonight. Lots of scriptures. <sighs> Exodus 32. Now, this is a familiar story. First of all, chapter 32 of Exodus is very familiar. That's when God had delivered his people, not the enemy, his people, delivered them, and he had Moses up on the mountain, giving Moses wisdom and instruction, and the people, his people, they were bored. They needed something to do. So Aaron, Moses' brother, told him, Take off all your gold. Give me all the gold. Take it off the children, the wives, the husband. Give me all the gold. And he did something with it. It came out a golden image of the calf. So God knew what they were doing, but Moses didn't know. So God was angry. He was angry. So I'm going to start in on verse. I think I'm going to start with verse 18. I'll start with 17. Okay. Okay. Okay, verse 11 says, <clears throat> Moses sought favor of the Lord, his God. Oh God, he said, why 
should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians say it was evil intent that brought them out to kill them in the mountains and wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger, relent, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servant Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And I will give your descendants all this land I promised them, and it will be their inheritance. Then the Lord relent and did not bring on his people the disaster he threatened. So Moses encouraged God to repent. God was so angry, he was saying, I just delivered you from the enemy. How can you pray and worship a calf, a golden calf that can't breathe, can't create a miracle for you? Here I am, a living miracle working God and you're going to choose to worship a calf that can do nothing for you. So it was Moses that encouraged God to not harm his people and to repent for your wrong thoughts. So the next the next scripture we're going to go to and it's so many scriptures in the New Testament regarding repentance. Now it's quite a few in the Old Testament, but the majority of them are in the New Testament. So I'm going to go to Matthew's, the third chapter in verse 2. And this is John the Baptist talking. So Matthew... Matthew 3 verse 2 says repent for the kingdom of heaven is near this is he who has spoken through the prophet Isaiah so um, John the Baptist was warning the people almost daily to repent of their sins even before he baptized them he went out and he would worship God daily uh, wanting the people to repent, repent, repent. So Matthew 3 and 8 says, bear fruit in keeping with repentance. So in order to bear fruit, you have to be fruitful. You have to do according to God's will. Know the word, do the word, be a doer, not just a hearer of God's word. So that's what John the Baptist was educating the people on. So the next scripture I have is Matthews, the third chapter, verse 11. This is, again, John the Baptist. He says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire in the name of Jesus. So we know who he was preparing the way for by saying someone who is greater than I in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. So the next scripture is Matthew 4, verse 17. And it reads, From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. So not only did God, the creator, say we should repent, John the Baptist said we should repent. Now here's Jesus saying the same thing. Repent. Repent means just to say you're sorry for whatever you have done. We have all committed sins. We're, we've all done or said something that we shouldn't have done or said or went somewhere we shouldn't have been or whatever the case may be. We serve a loving God, a merciful God whose grace and mercy is brand new every day. So you don't have to hold on 
to old things. Oh, 10 years ago, she said this about me. He did this to me. Release it. Yes. Do it for you. Release it. Don't carry it. Jesus said, cast your care on me, for I care for you. You don't have to carry all this weight. You being weighed down with all this stuff, just dragging and weighing you down, pulling you down. Set yourself free. Release it. So the next scripture we're going to go to is Matthew 11, chapter, verse 20. Matthew 11, verse 20. Matthews 11 verse 20 says Then Jesus began to denounce the city in which most of his miracles had been performed because they did not repent. So Jesus the, the Jesus who is a miracle worker the people they were stubborn they would not repent so he denounced everything all the good things he had planned on saying and doing he, he denounced it he just took it back because they did not repent and he told them woe unto you woe unto you Bethesda if the miracle that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it would be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. So Jesus is not playing. He was not playing. He was not playing with them. The next scripture I'm going to go to is Matthew 12, verse 41. Matthew 12, 41 says, Then the men of Nineveh will stand up at judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah and now one greater than Jonah is here. So they repented. So their sins were forgiven. Their sins were forgiven. Forgiven. They repented. My next scripture is in the book of Mark, the first chapter, and verse 15. And it reads, this is Jesus speaking. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. So what Jesus began to do then, he was gathering his disciples. He was gathering his disciples. The next scripture I have is Mark 1, verse 4. Mark 1, verse 4. And so John came baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance. So as you can see, baptism and repentance, they go hand in hand. Once you uh, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you repent of your sins, you get baptized or you get baptized and repent of your sins. Either way, do them both in the name of Jesus. It says, Preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. So you have sins that you know need to be forgiven. Repent. Repent. Mm -hmm. 
and verse 5 says, the whole Judean countryside and all the people in Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. In the name of Jesus. So they confessed their sins. And they were baptized by John the Baptist. So the next scripture is in Mark, the sixth chapter, verse 12. Mark, the sixth chapter, verse 12 says, And they went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. In the name of Jesus, thank you. They repented. They were preached to. They were healed of sickness. And they had deliverance. They were delivered from demons. So repentance is very, very important. It opens the door for your healing. It opens the door for your deliverance in the name of Jesus. The next scripture I have is Luke 3 and 3. Luke 3 and 3 says, He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance. This is John the Baptist. For the forgiveness of sin, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet. There are so many scriptures in the New Testament of repentance. And when you read something in the Bible that's being said over and over and over again, it is very important. It is of an importance that you need to say, am I doing those things? Do my life line up? I need to, is this something I need to repent for? Ask God to bring it back to your remembrance, what you need to repent for. You could have been forgot. Yeah, so give yourself a check up with God and find out if there's something you need to uh, repent for. Because there's plenty of things I didn't forget, but I have to repent daily. Yep. Daily, I have to repent in the name of Jesus, daily. <sighs> daily, that's a daily thing for me. Okay, Luke 3 and 8 is my next scripture. And it reads, Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. This is John the Baptist speaking. Verse 7 says, John said to the crowd coming out to be baptized by him, You broad of vipers who warn you to flee from the coming wrath, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourself, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. So in other words, don't think you're so already um, have salvation and already saved, thinking, well, we have the word from the father Abraham. Uh, John the Baptist was telling them, I tell you, out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. God can do anything. Right. Yes, he can raise children out of stone. Yes, he can. So the next scripture I have is Luke 5 and 32. Luke 5 and 32 says, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And that's like saying, let's build a new hospital over here for well people. Well, we know a hospital is for the sick. Right. It's not for well people. Right. It's for the sick. So God is saying, 
I have not come to call the righteous. If you are already righteous, I'm not talking to you. I'm going after the sinners, the lost souls. I want everyone to be saved. I want to give everyone an opportunity that on that day they can't say, Lord, I didn't know. Lord, nobody told me. You have social media so much. I thank God for Facebook and all these other uh, social medias because so much word comes down through them. It's a lot of garbage that comes, but so much word comes down. And um, again, God is saying, I have not come to call the righteous, but to call the sinners to repentance. So he wants the sinners to repent so they can be saved. He wished not one soul would perish. That goes back to uh, when he's on the hill and 99 there and one go astray. He's going to lead the 99 to go after the one. He's not an arrogant God to say, oh, I have these 99. Let them go. Who cares? That's not God. That's not our Father, which are in heaven. That's not him. No. That's something Satan would say, but that's not what God would say. So we, we serve a merciful God, a loving God who loves us. He said we are to die for. He sent his only begotten son to go through all of that. All of that he went through. All of that. And we're going to see that in scripture also. So the next scripture I have is Luke 10 and 13. Luke 10 and 13. I mean, I found so many scripture on repentance. Luke 10 and 13. Woe unto you, Bethesda, for if the miracle that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and in ashes. And that was in another scripture that I read. So God is saying the same thing all over again. Jesus is saying the same thing. It says, Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will be lifted up to the skies. No, you will go down to death. He who listens to you listens to me. He who rejects you rejects me. So that's like if you go out witnessing and you're trying to witness to someone and they don't want to hear it, they don't God is saying they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me, him, the father. That's what they're saying. They're not rejecting you, the human that they see. They're rejecting him. They're rejecting his word. Cuz we're speaking his word. It's not our words, it's his word. We're doing the work of the Father. So that's what he's saying. But he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. So we have to do the work of the ministry. Either stand here and minister, whether you out um going out in the community, ministering, whatever the case may be. We have to do the work of the ministry. Apostle taught us well, and he even left enough of his material that we need to still sit down and study. I listen to his tapes. I have several of his tape series. I have several of his CDs. I listen to his word. When I want to hear his voice, I listen to his, his tapes and his, um, his, his CDs. I need to buy some more on a different subject that I don't have at home but apostle was a great example of what we ought to do and we need to continue the work that he have done and also the work that apostle Rosa have done we need to continue it so whenever um, minister Cynthia asks someone to minister they should be glad to do it it should be an automatic yes it should be an automatic yes so the next scripture I have is Luke 11 and 32. There's a lot of talent in this house, and we need to spread it abroad. Yes. Put some new faces up here that we haven't seen. 
stand up here. I mean, you're, you're among family. You're among family. Don't let the enemy um, control your mind. Say, oh, I'm fearful. I can't get up there in front of people. I haven't, you can tell, I haven't had no, <laughs> no speaking engagement, no speaking class, none of that. But get up there and do it and allow God to speak through you. Do the work of the Father. Just do the work of the Father. That's how I look at it. I'm doing the work of the Father. So the next scripture I have is Luke 11, verse 32. And I know y'all wondering, like, when she say a verse, why did it take us so long? Because the numbers are so tiny, I can't even see the numbers. Okay. So it says, Luke 11, 32, the men of Nineveh would stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now one greater than Jonah is here. Again, it's being repeated. It's being repeated. Okay, Luke 13 and 5. See what that says. Luke 13 and 5. And it says, I tell you no, but unless you repent, you all will perish. I'm going to go back to verse 4. It said, Of those 18 who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. So, there's no big eyes, little you, who will be saved if they don't repent. The Bible is saying if you don't repent, you all will perish. This is just how serious it is to repent. Okay, Luke 15, verse 7. The next one is Luke 15 and verse 7. And it reads, I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. So they said in heaven there would be such a rejoicing if one person would repent compared to 99 of the righteous people who don't need to repent for anything. They're more happy that that one sinner repented. That's just how awesome it is for us to repent and to get it right with God. Because when you repent, you freeing yourself. You're saying, Lord, I know I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have went there. I shouldn't have, could have, would have. But on that day, I can't keep stressing how important it is. On that day, none of that is going to matter. You have a new day every day you wake up. Whoever you need to say I'm sorry to, call them and tell them I'm sorry. Send them a text, call them, send them a card, go see them in person, whatever the case may be. Just say I'm sorry, I forgive, or if they've done something to you, tell them I forgive you and get it off you. Tell them I forgive you and just move on. And just move on, but it would no longer be in your court holding you down weighing you down because you done got it all for you. Okay, the next one is Luke 15 and verse 10. Luke 15 verse 10 says, In the same way, I tell you, there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Now that's very close to the scripture I just read. But once again, it's being repeated over and over because it's important. The Father wants you to get it. And it's in there, scripture after scripture after scripture. It's in there. Okay. The next one is Luke 16, verse 30. 
Luke 16, verse 30 says, No father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Now, this is the story of the rich man. So I'm going to back it up a little bit to verse 19. The story of the rich man and Lazarus. It says, there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate laid a, laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came to lick his sores. The time came when the beggar died, and the angel carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man died also and was buried in hell where he was in torment. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water to cool my tongue. So here it is, he was a rich man living in a mansion with a big gate around his mansion. He see this beggar out there he never offered him food. He never did anything to bring him comfort or anything. So he's not telling Abraham himself to dip his finger in the water to cool his tongue. He's telling the beggar who he never helped. But now he wants the beggar to help him. He said, um, have pity on me. Have pity on me. The rich man died and was buried. Okay. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in cool water to cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things when Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here. And you are the one in agony. So it's like their roles reversed. And besides, all this between us and you is a great chasm that has been fixed so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. So Abraham was telling him, we're in heaven, it's fixed. No one from heaven can go down to hell, and no one from hell can come up to heaven. So he answered and said, I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so they would not come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and they have prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if, some, if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. This is the rich man saying, if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to them, if they don't listen to Moses and the prophet, then they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. So Abraham was telling him, no, we're not finna send you to your brothers and warn them and everything. We have a prophet. We have Moses. If they don't listen to them, they ain't going to listen to you from the dead. So um, the next scripture I have is Luke 17, verse 3. Luke 17, verse 3. It says, If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. If he sin against you seven times in a day, and seven times come back to you and say, I repent, then forgive him. In other words, don't hold on to nothing. No matter how many times a day, your, your relative, your neighbor, your boss, whoever, they offend you, 
As long as they said, I'm sorry, they have repented, you need to release it and not hold on to it. That would be your flesh that would tell you, no, you already have forgave them for that. Don't keep forgiving them. They just going to keep on doing it. Shut up. Don't listen to your flesh. Again, your flesh is your biggest enemy. It's not the person that you see that you think that don't like you or always saying something about you. It's your own flesh. Your flesh is lazy. The flesh is stingy. The flesh don't want to give of his time, his money, uh, extra clothes. If you need to donate something, the flesh don't want to give away nothing. No, it's your own flesh. That's your flesh telling you that. Get out of the flesh. Get into the spirit and stay there. <laughs> stay there. So the next scripture I have. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Okay, Luke 24, verse 47. Luke 24 and 47. Oof. And it says, Verse 46 says, he told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sin will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So, once again, repent. It said to all nations. So there's no certain group. That repentance without to repentance goes out to everyone. Everyone understands, everyone comprehends repentance. 